Hi guys, welcome to Katernix Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about humidity and the role that it plays during the incubation process. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions online lately uh, about people who are having issues getting their humidity levels up high enough or keeping the humidity levels low enough um, during the uh, first part of incubation. Um, there is a meter that is called a hygrometer and that is used to register um, or to measure relative humidity in the air. Um, a lot of your incubators have built-in hygrometers um, that will tell you what the humidity is inside the incubator. Um, but if they don't, um, you can always buy these uh, little portable models. Uh, here's a little small one here. Um, that will give you a pretty good um, guesstimate of what the humidity level is inside your incubator. Uh, the one thing I do want to say though is if your incubator has a hygrometer on it, you still want to get another um, standalone hygrometer. Uh, the reason is the one on your incubator may not be accurate. So if you've got a second one, you can put that in there. You can kind of compare the two. And if they're close, then yes, you can go off the one that's on your, your uh, incubator. If not, you can kind of go with the averages between the two. Um, humidity levels during the incubation process um, are, there's two different levels of humidity that you want to use. During the first 14 days of incubation, you want a lower humidity level and that needs to be between 40 and 50 percent and then when you go on to lockdown on day 15 you want to raise those humidity levels up to about 65 to 80 percent somewhere in, in that neck of the woods um, the reason for those two different levels are during the incubation process where you have the lower humidity level um, the egg is porous and it absorbs moisture out of the air and on the fat end of the egg is an air cell. And when the chick inside pips that inner membrane, um, that air cell is the first air that he breathes until he can actually pip through the eggshell. So if your humidity is too high during the incubation process, your, the egg is gonna absorb too much moisture, you're gonna have too small of an air cell, and when that chick pips the inner membrane, he's not gonna have enough uh, air inside that egg to breathe and he actually ends up drowning inside the egg or suffocating inside the egg. So you need to keep the uh, first 14 day humidity, like I say, between 40 and 50 percent. Now when you go into lockdown on day 15, you want to raise those humidity levels up. And the reason for that is uh, during the last three days, the eggshell is, I won't say hard, but uh, it's a, it's a little bit brittle during the first 14 days. During the lockdown period, you want as much moisture as you can in there, and that, that will permeate into the eggshell and soften that eggshell so that the chick can actually pip and um, hatch out of the egg. Um, there are two different methods of incubating. There is the wet hatch method and the dry hatch method. Uh, the wet hatch method is what I, what I just explained to you where you put a little bit of water in your incubator during the first 14 days, keep the levels you know, in the 40 to 50% range, and then uh, increase the water amount in the incubator during the last three days uh, to raise the uh, levels up. Uh, the dry hatch method, which is the method that I use, I don't put any water in the incubator at all during the first 14 days. Um, I like to incubate at about 35% humidity, and me being in South Florida, our humidity levels are about uh, anywhere between 50 and 90% on any given day, so um, my incubators get enough moisture during that. I actually have a hard time lowering the, incub the uh, temperature sometime. Like on this incubator here, uh, with no water in the incubator, it's already got a 56% humidity and the vent is wide open. So um, it's getting most of that humidity directly from the uh, outside air. Uh, if you have issues with low humidity while you're incubating, like say down around 20, 30%, um, you can increase those humidity levels by adding water to the incubator. Um, the biggest thing 
as far as humidity concern, is not the amount of water that you add, but the surface area of water that you add. Um, we're going to go a little bit more into that on lockdown, but I want to talk first about uh, humidity levels during the incubation process. So most incubators have vents on them. Um, this one only has one. It's on the top and it's a slide vent, slides back and forth. Uh, this model here has a couple vents that normally have little red plugs in them that you can use to uh, block off the, uh, the vents with. Um, so say during the first 14 days your, incubate, your humidity levels are really low and you want to start raising it up. So you add water to your, your water tray or your channels inside the incubator, but it's still not coming up to the point that you want it. Um, you can somewhat adjust the incubator or adjust those levels by blocking off some of the vents. Um, that's going to hold more moisture in. If uh, you've got like a cabinet incubator and you're using one of these trays, you can actually take a sponge, get the sponge wet, and stand it up inside the tray. And the, the, you have to have water in the tray. And what that does is increases the surface area of the, uh, the tray. Instead of just having the surface area of the tray itself, you also have the upper surface area of this sponge that's sticking out of the water. <clears throat> and the sponge will wick moisture up into it so it's constantly uh, you know, bringing up moisture and your fans are circulating the, the uh, humidity around the incubator. Uh, another thing, when you go into lockdown and you try to get that humidity levels up to say 65 or 75%, a lot of people I've been noticing online have been having some issues with that, especially with the larger incubators, the cabinet style incubators. Um, you've got the largest pan in the bottom, you've got sponges in the bottom and standing up in the pan and it's still not bringing your levels up past say 50%. Um, the one thing you can do, and this is one thing that I have done in the past, is on day 15, you notice your incubation or your humidity levels aren't coming up, you can take a, a spray bottle and mist the inside of the incubator. and on the walls. You now try not to get it on the eggs, but you know on the walls. That's going to raise your humidity levels up real high, real fast. Um, but it's not going to last long. Maybe a half a day or so. But that's where we get into averages. Um, during incubation, and this starts from day one right through hatch. If uh, you notice your humidity levels are real low, and you add water, and then they come way up, and you're like, "Well, I added too much water." what you want to do is look at the averages of what your humidity level is. If it's 20% on the low side and 50% on the high side, you've got about a 35% humidity level in there, you know, about halfway in between. So average your humidity levels. Um, it doesn't have to stay a constant flat humidity level during the entire incubation. It's, that would be almost impossible to get unless you had, say, one of those uh, it's actually a mister. It's a, a humid kit, humid kit, uh, that uh, humid kit that actually sprays moisture into the incubator when the levels start getting a little bit low. So, misting is is one way that you can bring your humidity levels up. And I know people are going to say, well, you don't want to open the incubator up uh, during lockdown because if you have chicks that pip, um, they are going to get shrink wrapped inside the egg. That's true. But if you missed inside the incubator on day 15, you have no eggs are pipped. If you missed inside there on day 16, no eggs are pipped. You get up Sunday morning, you look at the eggs to see if any of them are pipped on day 17. And uh, if none of them have pipped, go ahead and miss real quick. If you do notice they're pipping, leave them alone and they'll do fine. They should be hatch out no problem. <clears throat> Another thing too on day 17, the reason you really don't need to uh, miss the inside of the incubator is once those chicks start hatching, uh, there's a lot of moisture inside the egg. Um, if you've ever looked at the chicks right after they hatch, they're, they're soaking wet. That is going to raise your humidity levels up quite a bit during incubation. So let's go the other way and say you have too much humidity. Um, I don't know if I already went over that or not, but uh, 
if I haven't, I'm going to repeat myself again. Uh, if you need to lower your humidity, uh, one thing you could do is not put as much water in um, or reduce the surface area of the water. So instead of using a pan this big, uh, use a pan half this size. Um, also, you can open your vents wide open and uh, that'll allow a little bit more air to get in there and circulate. Uh, if you have an incubator that is, is a forced air incubator, the fan will actually help circulate that air and bring drier air in from the outside and kind of lower your humidity levels a little bit. Um, I do want to say one thing. Uh, when you use your vents to control humidity, you want to make sure that the day that you notice pipping or the day that you notice eggs hatching, uh, do not close these vents. You want the vents wide open. The chicks need fresh air circulation coming through there. And uh, if you close the vents off, it's just going to get, you know, too stuffy and musty in there. I've never actually seen a chick die from that, but uh, you want the vents open. You, you want fresh air circulating through there. So, guys, I hope this gives you a basic um, idea of humidity and, you know, the importance and, and the roles of it. But I don't want you to stress out over humidity. I see so many people that are obsessed with keeping the humidity levels at a certain level and when they get into lockdown they believe it's got to be at a certain level just remember averages if you can keep that low number and that high number whatever's in the middle of them in the ballpark of the humidity levels you want your chicks are going to do fine so guys i hope this helped out and uh you know i hope it gives you a little bit better understanding of humidity and the importance it plays during the incubation process um if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and uh, you'll get notified of any new and upcoming videos. I want to thank you for joining me today. Thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next one.